opinions and stories around the game we love told by your favorite storytellers stay up to date with all things cricket subscribe to crick boss's youtube channel and press that bell icon now we're coming to the final stages of the ICC Women's World Cup and one team has already qualified for the semi-final that's Australia South Africa they're sitting pretty comfortably so it looks like they will qualify that means there's two spots left and potentially four teams that could make it New Zealand very very slim chance for them to make it England they need to make sure that they beat Pakistan and Bangladesh and they have to be good solid victories to increase their net run rate. As for West Indies they currently sit third. They've got two games left against Pakistan and South Africa. If they win one they qualify. As for India, destiny is there in their own hands. They have to win their final two games. Win comfortably and ensure that their net rate net run rate is good. If they lose one then they need to hope for other results to go their way. The fact that India play South Africa last as well, they'll understand what the net run rate is and what the situation. So they are kind of in the box seat out of all of those four teams for that final two spots. It's time to do the preview of India taking on Bangladesh here on Crick Buzz. Both teams head to Hamilton, a ground that India certainly know well, and a side that they have a little bit of history against. Bangladesh actually beat them in the 2018 T20 Asia Cup. They had that victory. They've played them in four ODIs, yet India have come across and won all of those four encounters. Last time was 2017. But one thing that India need to be wary of is the fact that Bangladesh are playing with a bit of freedom. They're excited, they're happy to be here. It's a little bit like Thailand were in the T20 World Cup in 2020. They nearly pushed West Indies and got a victory against the side that we didn't expect that to happen and they found a win against Pakistan when they were able to post a decent amount of runs. One thing for sure is that Bangladesh they have great bowlers. Jananara Alam has been good for them and has been for a long period of time, but it's their spinners, their leg spinners that are the key for them. And we know India can play spin well, but we've also seen Charlie Dean from England cause a few havocs for India. In terms of the batting department We know that the skipper Nigar Sultana has scored some runs and Fagana Hock Pinky has been really really the one that has scored the bulk of runs. Bangladesh will hope that they probably put India in, put them under pressure, get them out for a low total and have time to chase down the runs. That's probably their method or their brand of cricket at the moment. So India do absolutely need to be wary. The ace card for India has to be the fact that they're used to World Cups. They're used to 50 over World Cups. They've had success. They were the runners up in 2017. A lot of their players have played in big events whereas the Bangladesh side certainly haven't. But with that comes expectation. That's why I think India do need to be wary. In terms of experience and the strength, Harman Preet Kaur is an absolute strength for them. She has been looking comfortable batting well, going early, not sitting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Uh she's been able to rotate the strike. I think for India their ace card still has to be to play with that freedom. So if they can score runs at the top, if they can get off to a really good partnership at the top and those 50s become 80s, 100s, then all of a sudden India are uh, India are putting a lot of runs on the board and making the Bangladesh side really chase the leather. That has to be the strength and that's something that they have to focus. India just need to play the way that we know that they can. In terms of the playing 11, let's go with Bangladesh because I, I don't think they'll make any changes. They haven't against the West Indies. They didn't against Pakistan either. Because of the victory against Pakistan, they've kept with the same side. And why not? They're a side that are doing well. They nearly like I said got across the line to beat West Indies. They kept them to 140 but were unable to get across the line losing by four runs. As for India, it's a real question on what they want to do. I I think given that they've got two games left, 
Bangladesh would be seen as a lesser game. South Africa, a really tough one. I do feel like it's going to come down to that last game, whether India sneak through to the fi- the semi-finals or not. So what do they do in terms of batting? If they believe that Shafali Verma is the right person and Dipti Sharma is the one that has to sit out and, and miss out because Yastika Bhatia has done well, then they've got to continue to do that. They've got to give whoever it is, a real opportunity against Bangladesh. And I think if they win the toss, they have to bat as well. I think they just need more time out there for their batting department. That's what's been lacking. Albeit at Eden Park against the Australians, it was the bowlers that probably let them down. They got the runs on the board. It was such a great pitch. It was so true that the Australians were able to chase it down. Albeit in the last over, but with ease as well. So from... A playing 11, will they make changes? I I don't think they will. I think they'll go with the same side. Um, they're, they're a side that once they kind of unlock a bit of a recipe, they keep with that. I can't see anyone else coming in. I'm actually going to go to Jul and Goswami. Eyes will be on her. She kind of rolled her ankle or hurt her ankle against Australia. She didn't bowl as well as we know she could. It is her last World Cup. Let's not let's not pretend that she's going to continue to go on as much as we'd all like it. So she needs to have a good game. She needs to be able to make some breakthroughs with the new ball. Meghna Singh and her have been partnering really well. So all eyes on Julian Goswami to have a big impact with the ball. As for Bangladesh, I'm going to go for the little lefty. Watch out for Trishna. She hasn't picked up a lot of wickets since the first game against South Africa. She picked up three wickets, but I think she's going to be a handful for the Indian top order. It's a World Cup. Every match counts. You have to turn up and expect to be challenged. There are no easy games in this World Cup, and that's why we love it. We love the closeness that we've seen throughout this tournament. We love the fact that Bangladesh, playing their first 50 over World Cup, have pushed sides, have challenged teams. That's all you can hope for for new teams coming into the competition. I do feel that India need to just focus on themselves, focus on the process, not the outcome, the process. How are they scoring runs? How are they rotating strike? How do they build their innings? How do they create wicket opportunities? They're all the questions that the players need to answer and they've got to be able to stay in the moment. Very simple, very simple to do, but such a key to playing under pressure. Whilst Bangladesh has had success against India in the shortened format, I do feel India will overpower them. A side that is showing that they're improving every match and they have to, but they need to come out big and they need to be able to click in all departments because Bangladesh, South Africa, two big games, they get it right, they find themselves in the semi-finals.